Gina Chuzzi is a painter and a muralist and a painting teacher, and what she does with colors just sings to my soul. Hi, I'm Katie Texas. Welcome to Studio Space. I think something that I really value in my own life creatively and is important for me to sort of relay to my students as well is discipline and showing up for your work, even when it feels like the inspiration's not there or the energy's not there, finding a way to work it into your life regardless. All right, Gina Chuzzi, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you for being here. I can't wait to talk a little bit more about your work and your paintings, both large and small. And I just want to say right off the bat that I love everything you do with color. Oh, thank you. Just everything. Thank you. Uh, we could start with a little bit of background. Were you always interested in art? Yeah, definitely. I'd say it's the thing that's been the most constant in my life. I was really fortunate to be raised next door to these artists, a married couple, Phoebe and Charles, and they both had studio spaces in their home. They were career artists, so they were making work all the time. And Charles in particular had this massive studio with um, his huge paintings on the wall and a sound system where he was always listening to music. And I remember from a very young age thinking like, I want that, that's mm -hmm. like the life I want and whatever I can do to make that happen for myself that's how I want to spend my time. That's where I want to be in life. And were you encouraged to do that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, my parents are both really creative people. My mom's a carpenter and my dad is a musician. So I think they understand the importance of, or I know they understand the importance of having a creative outlet. And so they were always fostering that in me. They were always very supportive of that in me. I would say from junior high, I was taking it really seriously and trying to have an art practice of my own. However, that can be defined by like a 12 year old, but constantly keeping um, a, a routinized creative process as a part of my life. Mm. I think sometimes people come into painting or art classes with the idea that inspiration is this ephemeral, elusive thing when really successful artists sit down and get to work. Yeah, yeah, totally inspiration is really fleeting, right? It's not something we can just tap into. You're really fortunate when you experience it, but it's not always there. So you have to constantly work even when that's just not on the table as an option for experiencing that that day. Does the practice of making art have meaning for you personally? Yeah, I think that, you know, the practice of making art is a way for me to process great emotions that I otherwise don't have um, language for. So, you know, my processing my relationship to color or to texture or to ideas, concepts, all of that kind of gets hashed out in the work. And I don't have an identifiable other outlet for that in my life. So it's just a great way to, to process all of it, you know, to process joy or desire or grief and loss, longing, all of that can be worked out in here, which is really, really valuable to me. So you process all these emotions, you put all of this like deep thought and problem solving and thinking into your pieces in these delicious, fantastic colors, <laughs> and then you set them free out in the world. Yeah. Do you have a hope for them when they go? My hope is that the viewer will have some minuscule amount of the experience that I had in making them. You know, I, a lot of things are really satisfying to me visually in, in making the work and looking at the work. And I think that my desire is for the viewer to have a similar experience, to value them, to cherish them in the way that I do, which of course it can't be the same experience. Maybe it can unlock some way of thinking in them that is different than my experience, you know, like it gets to be their relationship and sort of visual dialogue with the work. Oh, well, I'd love to see how you do that. Can we, uh, can you do a demonstration for of us? Of course, I would love to show you some things. Great. Yeah. There is a game. Tell me about what you're doing. 
So I'm working on an acrylic painting right now that is based on this photograph of Natural Bridges, which is a beach on the west side of Santa Cruz, right by where I grew up. I'm, I'm kind of building up this body of work that's all about eroding landscapes, and this is the first one from um, that series. And all of the landscapes that I'm sort of borrowing from in the series are all places that I've lived. And there's something about eroding landscapes, because when I look at this, this is a giant arch of stone. Mm -hmm. that, that's permanent, right? That's, right? that's something that's right. going to last long past me, and it was there long before I was born. Yeah, yeah. But it's not there anymore, right. is it? It's not there quite possibly because of like human impact. <laughs> I was thinking right? driving your car on it couldn't yeah. have helped. <laughs> yeah, like we enjoyed it to death. Right. So the... Um, color palette that I'm using here for this painting mm -hmm. is from the Wild Heart album cover by Stevie Nicks. So I, I just went in, you know, pixel at a time and kind of sampled all of these different colors here. Oh, that's fantastic. And, um, you know, I'm kind of like bringing that into the work. So somehow the record will also be sort of displayed with the painting, like I'll paint the record, but I will play with color in that too. So why Wild wild Hearts? Um, I think that, you know, I, I've been really drawn to the sort of post-Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks records in the last year of my life. My dear friend, Janessa Johnson, who's also a local artist, kind of brought that song back into my life. And it reminds me so much of being a young girl in this landscape. To me, it embodies this idea of like growth. You know, like I was a young girl when Stevie Nicks stepped out of Fleetwood Mac and became this amazing goddess. It's everywhere. You say you see the truth. Listening to that music really reminded me of that time. So I think in a lot of ways, you know, there's this kind of element of um, autobiography for me in this work where I'm talking very much about my life and, and my experience, you know, as a young person sort of existing in this landscape. Hmm. And the work is kind of always about music. It's It's sort of been a constant for me. The the way that I learned to draw when I was a young girl is that I would like lay under my parents' record player and just recreate the album covers. Music is an art form that's always been so inspiring to me and you know brought me so much joy. So I just wanted to kind of bring it bring it into the work because it's sort of a I don't know, a visual medium I've been captivated by my whole life. <laughs> We talked a little bit about different kinds of paint, um, but there's a principle that goes with all painting, and that is about light. Mm -hmm. So can you describe the difference between drawing and painting? I think of drawing as being um, a medium at which when you apply it to the paper, it becomes sort of still, right? So imagine if I was to take a graphite pencil and and run it across the surface of something. I can manipulate it a little bit, but it's pretty, it's pretty stagnant. Whereas with paint, there's a sort of sensuousness to the medium where it's open and malleable for a little bit longer. So I actually would qualify watercolor as more of a drawing medium mm. because it's sort of inability once it's sort of set to want to be, continue to be malleable, even though you can reconstitute it with water, you can get back in there, but, um, you know, maybe ink is actually a better argument for that. But that's kind of how I, I personally distinguish the two. And I should tell you that, like, I belong to a sort of um, camp of thought, maybe I can say, that, like, I, I recognize the rules in art making, mm -hmm. and I also hold them accountable for being defined by a history that I think is, like, richly problematic. So there's a part of me that's like, it's all drawing. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be painting if you say it is, right? Mm. Because I would think, like, imagine I'm, like, gluing felt to this two-dimensional surface. And, you know, if I want to argue that it's painting and I can stand by that with integrity, then I'm interested in that conversation, even though a purist might be like, that's not paint, so it's not a painting. And I kind of think, like, well, I don't know. I think it can be. I think it's, op it's important for us to redefine those things because, you know, they were defined by a specific demographic for so long that, you know, there's a part of me that has issue with that. Like, I don't know if you get to make the rules anymore. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> When you are working on a wall, when you're working outdoors, like on a mural, mm -hmm. and you've got to lift, or you've got to deal with, like, there, there's so much that just has to happen and can't really be undone. Yes. When you do big projects like that, do you also experiment there on the wall, or do you come at it with a really solid plan? I have, I, I have a little bit more of a plan. So I do a lot of both digital and analog sort of planning before I go to the wall. So that when I do get to the wall, I can just really stick to the plan. You know, it's like I develop a recipe here in studio and then execute the recipe at the location. But I, I am such an improvisational painter and I'm so attached to the spontaneity of being present with your work that I try to keep time for that as well. Like, I, I, it's important for me to also find ways to um, let things feel like they happened there because they needed to happen there. So, you know, I would say it's a good 80-20, 80% 80 pre-planning, 20% allowing myself to to make changes, to make moves outside of um, what the original plan was. I see what you're working on. Is there another project you're thinking of, a dream project? Oh man, this is definitely something I think about from time to time, you know, like if, if money was no issue or if time was no issue. And I do have this fantasy, I don't know if it's like a a dream project, but I think it's like a dream experience. I, I would love to rent a house somewhere in the south of France and spend a summer like painting landscape paintings, like stepping into the sort of fauve, you know, lifestyle and and seeing what Matisse saw and, you know, all, all of those sort of giants that I adore as a painter, you know, they feel kind of like the patron patron saints in a way. And so I've always kind of fantasized of, of gathering at my friends and having some space where we could collect as artists and, and be in this environment and kind of make work together and see that sparkle that's in the air there. You know, that's, I don't know if it's a dream project, but it's definitely a dream experience. Well, Gina, thank you so much for allowing us today in your beautiful studio. It's really been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. It's been delightful to have you here. And thank you for joining us today on Studio Space.